So hello and welcome back. We are getting closer and closer and closer to actually finishing up the Eastern Kingdoms. And then we'll move over to Kalmandor because there's a lot over there too. I mean, the world of Azeroth is so big and it's got so many neat little things in it, which is why I started this series. And yeah, we're going to be exploring the Blasted Lands today. The Blasted Lands is a really interesting place that is... It's got two different phases because like a lot of World of Warcraft, it, um, it, it has a time displacement thing going. Kind of like uh, Arathi Basin did, where you can either go back and quest in it in the post-cataclysm part or you can go back and in this case it would be for warlords of draenor and do the invasion that way to get into draenor and open that up although that is not the only way that you can get to draenor which um i'll tell you about that later i actually already let the that little gem slip during one of my lives, I don't remember which one, but there is a back door into Draenor that's a lot more... It's the way I usually go, because after you do the, the opening quest line once, all you want to do is get your garrison if you want to go to Draenor at all. So anyway, enough of that. We're going to jump in. We are going to first explore... Blasted Lands of the Past with Beryl. And then we're going to hand the reins over to Onyx, and she is going to show us around the Blasted Lands of the Draenor era. So, without further ado, let's just get started. Alright, so, when you come into the Blasted Lands, you will notice that it is definitely, it lives up to its name. It looks absolutely blasted. Um, this is because when the Dark Portal was opened the first time, the magic eruption from that just completely destroyed this area. This area used to be a lot, it actually used to be part of the Swamp of Sorrows. They were all one little area, and it was known as the Black Morass back then. If you want to see what it was like back then, you can go to the Caverns of Time and do the Black Morass, um dungeon and you can kind of see it was just a, a nice green swamp with the the portal there and when Medivh opened it the resulting magic just turned everything into what you see in front of you now right up here is Zidormi Zidormi is a bronze dragon who you will find in a lot of these areas that have two different time streams that you can go in and you can talk to her and either go back to the past which is where Beryl is or you can go to the present day so that is the first little thing the next little area which would be a lot easier for Onyx to explore although Beryl isn't really gonna have any difficulty because she can just go invisible even if these guys did notice her is the nether guard mines these are kind of neat because i'm pretty sure that this is the exact same layout as another mine that is used in the outlands which makes sense because this is the last area that you go to before you go to the outlands but it's just a really big long mine i remember questing in here you get lost or I used to get lost so easily. Um, if you're on the Alliance side, I'm pretty sure that you still have quests to come in here and rescue the Netherguard miners. If you're on the Horde side, I think your goal is to keep the Alliance out of, of the Netherguard mines. And there, it's just really neat because it's such a big mine. Like, you can, you can play around in here for days. I would say that it would be great for 
mining because you're in a mine, except um, there don't really seem to be any mineral resources, which is kind of sad. But it's kind of neat. You can just kind of roam around, have a good old time. You've got supply crates and all sorts of miners and things. And of course, you've got some horde characters who are just as stealthed out as I am. But yeah, that is the Netherguard mine. As you can see, this side of the mine is almost completely under Alliance control, so that part is good if you're Alliance, I guess. Alright, now all I have to do is get back out of the mine, but then again, I don't know. I spent a lot of time recently going through mines that were almost exactly the same as this one way up in the Burning Crusade area getting my Netherwing dragons. So I feel a little more confident in here like I actually maybe know where I'm going although I'm not going to quote that. But yeah you can go when you get to this area, it's just kind of a neat little, I don't even know what you would call it. It's not really a building, but then again, it almost feels like one. Anyway, so that is the Netherguard Mine. Now, just outside of the Netherguard Mine, as makes perfect sense to anybody, is the Netherguard Keep. There's not... Honestly, there's not a lot interesting here. The keep itself is like every other keep in World of Warcraft. The Mage Tower is kind of interesting in that it's got the, the neat little fossil in it. And then way at the top of the tower, there is a couple of trainers. Um, I think it's alchemy and maybe inscription. Don't quote me on that though. But yeah, now one thing you do need to keep in mind, if you are questing in Outland, I'm pretty sure that it's this Great to meet you. Thunderbrew. No, Safe there, travels. there is somebody here that sells a type of ale that is the, the end goal of a quest that is given to you in Hellfire Peninsula. And they never really tell you, if you don't really read the quest text very closely, that you have to go back to Netherguard Keep through the Dark Portal, which you can't really do anymore, but just know that if you are stuck on a dumb quest in Hellfire Peninsula looking for a type of ale, it's here at Netherguard Keep, so... That, that is a dumb fact I learned recently when going around and doing a bunch of questing in Outland. <laughs> now you can come over here to Shattershore, which is where a whole bunch of Gilneans shipwrecked. And so this whole shore is littered with drowned Gilnean soldiers, um, Gilnean merchants, all sorts of worgens who don't realize that they drowned. It's a little bit sad. Um, if you're on the Alliance side, you have questing that will send you out here to put their souls to rest and let them find the light. It's kind of a, a sweet little quest. Now another fun little area is right back here. If you go into the Serpent's Coil, and Beryl is not attuned to it, but there's this nifty little crystal, and you can get a quest that will send you deep inside of this cave, and you'll we'll just kind of run back to the back of it. I would stealth, but you know, sometimes you just want to kill things. Um, and by that I mean sometimes you just want to play a video game. We don't see them killing here, unless it's in a video game. Um, anyway, you can go all the way to the back. You have a quest that will send you all the way to the back of this cave if I can get to it without there getting lost. 
And once you get to the back of this cave, you find this little crazy gnome. And he sends you on a bunch of different quests. And to make it easier to turn the quests into him, you can go over and attune yourself to that crystal by just a little itty bitty blood sacrifice. And it lets you just teleport in and out of this cave. It is kind of cute though. He's just got his little, little bed, little table way back here in the back of the cave. Um, I'm pretty sure the quest, he wants you to get him something to eat other than cave fungus and a few other reagents. And yeah, I just happened to really get a kick out of the cute little gnome hut back in the back of the cave. It kind of amuses me. Now, honestly, there is... There's a lot going on in the Blasted Lands, but at the same time, for a long time, there wasn't really much reason to come here except the Dark Portal. Now, now, at least on the Alliance side, you definitely have more reasons to come here, especially if you are into RP at all, because the Blasted Lands has possibly one of the cutest little villages that you can find, but we will get to that one later. Now, as you are questing through the Blasted Lands, sometimes you will get imperfect Dranathus crystals, or if you manage to kill a rare, you'll get a perfect one. And they will come with a quest that will send you right over here to... How on earth do you say his name? Kamisha? Kamisha the Collector. He is a broken who came through when the dark portal emptied. All he really wants to do is go home. But he has a bunch of treasures that he will give you in exchange for Dranathus crystals, which you can get all over this zone. You also have way up here the Altar of Shadows, which um, when we come back through with Onyx, you can see you can actually have a lot of fun out here because if you come out here in the present day, there's no enemies here at all. No NPCs. So it's just a really cool hangout spot. And you don't get worried about having any enemies jumping down your neck which I have to admit is kind of nice. Now up ahead, we can see the Dark Portal, the place where Medivh first loosed the horde of orcs onto the world. And you can tell which phase you're in because if the Dark Portal is green, then you are in the past. If the Dark Portal is red, then you are going to be heading towards Draenor. That's one quick way to tell. Um, I do enjoy doing the Black Morass dungeon. For the lore of it, it's a real pain in the rear to do that dungeon normally because it's one of those that just takes... It takes forever and it's a real pain. But it does tell the story of Medivh opening the first dark portal, which is kind of interesting to learn. Now, also over here, you can help this uh, Murloc chieftain, and he will send you down to fight these Naga, rescue a bunch of Murloc babies. There's a lot of really fun little questing. You end up taking the place of one of these Murloc slaves that's dragging the treasure chest and you drag a bunch of murloc babies out to the ocean and free at least one little bunch of them along the way you kill a bunch of naga you take the place in the fighting pits and you destroy a bunch of their statues to queen ajara it's a fun quest line and of course you also go back into 
their cave, which is where they are taking all of these treasures, and that is the Bloodwash Cavern. And as you see, it's pretty darn full of Naga. There's the, the bunch of babies that you can take back to the ocean. We're not going to do that today, but maybe one day. It's kind of fun. Now, there's a horde encampment up here that we can't really go to because Beryl is not on the horde side, and so she would end up in a little bit of a fight. You know, she might not die, but then again, she might because I am absolutely terrible at playing a rogue, despite the fact that I love the idea of rogues. I'm just very bad at playing them. Um... <laughs> But anyway, that's the Sunvale Excursion. This is a Horde archaeology expedition led by the Blood Elves, who is here to research the area around the Dark Portal. And then down here is one of my very favorite towns in all of WoW. I do have a real soft spot for Gilnean architecture, and... The Gilneans that survived the Shattershore came here and they made themselves a very cute little village. And we're going to poke around in it because, like I said, I love Gilnean architecture and this place is great. Like, if you are looking for a, a house to claim as your own, since World of Warcraft still hasn't given us player housing, you can claim any one of these. Like, you've got this cute little fishing hut. You got your little bed over here in the corner. Nice fireplace. Herbs. Fishing lures. Very, very pretty art on the wall. You know, just a nice little fishing hut if you want that as your house. Or if you want something a bit more grand. You just have to ignore the guy that's... I think there is a NPC at the bottom floor, yeah. But, you know, you can just say that he's your butler. You have a much larger fireplace. A little bit more scandalous artwork on the walls. Not too scandalous. Blizzard did take the uh, worst of the pictures out of the game. You've got a little more art on the walls. A nice bookshelf. You can come upstairs, and you've got your little master bedroom up here. I really like this house. I think it is very nice. It's usually the one I say, if I lived in World of Warcraft, this is a very strong contender for what would be my house. You can tell it's my house because of all the books. <laughs> but yeah, you've got this little house, or if you just want to stay at the inn, even the Gilnean Inn is absolutely gorgeous. You can just pop right in. You've got two beds under the stairs here. Nice big sitting room out here. You can go out the back door. And then upstairs you've just got a couple more, a couple more sleeping quarters. You've got some bunk beds and another bed over here. Obviously not nearly as good as the single, single family dwellings, but you know, it still works. Now, the Gilnans that came here actually came here with a Gilnan druid who his whole idea was he was going to heal the Blasted Lands. And as you can see, he did have almost success. Uh, this is definitely much greener than the Blasted Lands all around it. Unfortunately, it was a very limited success and, well, he, he went a little bit crazy and in the end, the Gilneans that are in Surwich send you out to put a stop to him because, as you can see, he has summoned demons and all sorts of other monstrosities and he is right there that is marl wormthorn he is 
definitely not the easiest fight if you fight them at that level, but very much doable. And then I can't remember why there's another altar back in this corner, but it almost looks like another altar of shadows. It's not. It's just back here in the tainted scar. You got demons everywhere and another crazy, crazy um, altar. Ah, huh. and a rare. If you killed this um, erator, I think that's how you say it. I'm probably saying it wrong. Eridar. If you kill him, you would probably get a perfect Dranathus crystal because he is a rare. I'm not going to bother doing that right now because that's not what I'm here for today. Anyway, there's only one more little area that we will check out. Because mostly I want you to see it before it gets turned back into... Back to the future? Yeah, sure. Back to the future. Before we go back to the future with Onyx, we will go over the horde area here. We won't land because, again, Barrel might get killed. But I did have Onyx run around here and there really isn't much to it. I don't hate the horde. I just don't absolutely love the aesthetic of the horde, mostly. But one thing that is funny is you have all of these Dread Mall captives who, if you are a Hordy, then they are obviously not aggressive to you because they're your captives. If I were to land, they would definitely be aggressive to me. But if you go inside, there is one that is in the very top floor of this building that's just doing the Chris Farley dance. And yes, that is actually what it is. The ogres in World of Warcraft, their dance style was inspired by Chris Farley's Chippendale skit from Saturday Night Live. Little fun fact that I found out. I also found out that the design of the Blasted Lands was based on... I'm looking it up one more time because I can't remember how you say the name... It was based and inspired by Greater Sudbury in Ontario, a mining town whose soil was made nickel rich by a meteor strike. And it, the nickel rich soil kind of resembles the blasted lands because it might be rich with nickel, but it is definitely poor of everything else. So I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, we're going to turn it over to Onyx now, who is going to take us through the Blasted Lands of the future. Alright, so here we are now with Onyx. And as you can see, it looks a little bit stormier, I think. But other than that, it looks very similar, except maybe for that Zeppelin that's floating up there. But as you get close to the Netherguard Mines, you will see that there are a new group of different orcs that are hostile to both the Horde and the Alliance because they have come through the new Dark Portal that is coming from Alternate Draenor. And as you go over here, you will see that Netherguard Keep is completely destroyed and overrun with said orcs. So you can't really do much there. And it's the same with the Horde encampment over here. Again, it's been completely destroyed by the Fel... No, they're not Fel Orcs. They are... I can't remember. <laughs> Good job, me. But, yeah, you can't, can't really go in and see anything because... There are Iron March orcs. We'll just call them Iron March or orcs everywhere. And they've pretty much taken over everything, but not completely, which is kind of an interesting little thing. Now, as you're playing through to head to alternate Draenor, you will basically just be staying in this middle area. 
And that's the interesting part because the rest of the area is pretty darn empty. Now you can see the dark portal is red this time. And you come here and you can basically just storm the dark portal with Cadgar, which we are not going to do because, like I said, as much as I enjoyed doing that quest, the first couple times, once I found the back door, and all credit to that has to go to a guildmate of mine, and I cannot remember his character's name, but the, the character showed us the back door into Draenor, and I have shown it to many people since then because it's absolutely the best thing ever. Oh, hey, we explored the Blasted Lands. Good job, Onyx. Now, you have a couple of boats here. Unfortunately, they are not... They're, they're just empty. There's nothing to them. Unlike the boats in the Swamp of Sorrows, they have no cool stuff in the cabins. All you have is one little seat. Kind of a bummer because I do like saying that I have my own ship. Unfortunately, it just isn't going to work out with this one anyway. And again, the Horde ships are the same. Actually, they might be a little bit less even because I don't even think you can go below deck in them. Nope. But, oh well. Life goes on, right? You can also go up here and check out the Zeppelin, which again is empty, but kind of fun. You can just hang out on a Zeppelin. Now where things get interesting is when you go down on the beach, because like I said, most of the actual action is centered up around the dark portal and I won't say that Blizzard forgot to put anything down here, but you can definitely go and check out the Murloc village that is now amazingly free of any Naga anywhere. You can also go over and check all of the Naga areas, including their cavern, which is now completely empty. So if you need a good hideout, and you want a big, complicated blood wash cavern with mining in it? Well, you've got it over here. And it's honestly kind of a neat little cave. I really like the design of some of these because you can definitely see the old um, night elf architecture that still permeates a lot of the area back here. And it's just kind of a really neat place to hang out. So, if you need your own cavern hideout for your guild, here you go. And like I said, you know, guaranteed Naga free if you come through in the Draenor phase of time. So that's kind of cool. Now the other thing I found out that is really interesting and I'm not sure if it normally is this way or not so we're gonna find out now but yeah we'll just look around here really quick and then we'll run back out of the cavern but yeah the other thing that I found out that I thought was really really interesting is there seems to be some phasing going on and I think I have it figured out because I, I noticed both with Beryl and with Onyx, because I took them both in this area exploring before I did the video, just to check everything out and make sure that I didn't forget anything. And what I noticed with both of them is if you approach Sir Witch and the Tainted Scar from one direction, you get... Um, you get the, the demons and everything still there, but if you approach it from the other direction, it's completely empty, which could be very good for Horde players who would like a Gilnean-style house of their own. 
I can't guarantee that it won't phase back at some point, but most of this area is pretty darn empty. Also, um, the reliquary base here, the Sunvale excursion, completely empty now, but you can definitely see that Blood Elves do like their comfort, and they brought one of their very, very posh round beds into that camp, that uh, tent with them. But it seems like if you approach Sir Witch from the front side, it's completely empty. Or it was, yep, it, it is again. So if you come at it from this direction, even as a horde player, you now have a completely empty town that you can just do whatever you want. You know, you can run in, claim this house as your own. There's not even a dwarf here anymore. And you have this entire very moody area just to hang out in. Like, this is a really cool area. Like, it's very, very moody, very thematic, and it's completely empty. But, if you approach it from the other direction, you can see even, even here, completely empty. Just, whatever you do, don't make the mistake of coming from the other direction. Because if you come from the other direction, or even cross over into the Tainted Scar, things quickly change, as you will hopefully see, unless that was just a weird thing. Yep, oh, there we go. You cross into the Tainted Scar, and suddenly you have demons. You come back out of the Tainted Scar, and everything is fully demon. The tree is occupied. You again have a feral druid who is in the tree and sir witch this is more important for horde characters if you wanted your own gilnan house if you touch the tainted scar at all sir witch will now be occupied by hostile to you forces so i thought that that was kind of interesting because as you can see if I get a little bit close, you can see hostile and you will be marked as PvP. Now that character right there is neutral and I'm not sure why. That's interesting. Ah, uh, Cenarian. Okay, that makes sense. She is Cenarian Circle. So that is about it, but I hope you enjoyed it. Like, I really do. I really, really, really enjoy this entire area. Oh, that was interesting. I saw the flight point fade in and then fade back out. That was weird. Hmm. Anyway, you never know what glitchy little things you will discover in World of Warcraft. Like I said, I didn't know about the phasing until today. So I was today years old when I found out that if you approach it from one area, everything is empty, but if you approach it from the other area, suddenly you're full of demons. So with all of that, thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, you, if you didn't catch the back door into Draenor, it will be featured in either a Pandaria or possibly a Draenor when we get to exploring those areas. Or just hit me up. I am always more than happy to show people the back way to get your garrison without having to open Draenor via the Dark Portal. I honestly think it's the coolest thing ever. So other than that, from me and Beryl, and even Onyx, who is sitting here on her jeweled panther, looking all serious. Have a good one. <laughs>